Hey guys, I just finished watching Day Shift, a Netflix original, so right off the bat, yes it's disposable, yes it has little substance, but, but, it's not nearly as bad as most of the content Netflix puts out. This was actually a really enjoyable time and probably the most fun I've had in a Netflix original. I wouldn't say it's the absolute best, currently The Gray Man holds that title. Um, 8 out of 10 is the highest I've ever given a Netflix film, and I've watched, I think, 21 of them now. So that's kind of sad. But maybe one of them will reach greater heights. And this one was really close, but I can't. I just can't. It just wouldn't make sense to put it above stuff like Bird Box, The Witcher, Nightmare of the Wolf, and um, The Gray Man, which are the three I have above it. I just don't think it really should go above those. But it's still a great time. Um, it's basically about... Jamie Foxx, I cannot believe this man is Electro. It is seriously night and day in terms of like acting performances. Amazing Spider-Man 2 in here. So, yeah. He's, uh, Jamie Foxx is named Bud, and he, um, although really I just thought of him as Jamie Foxx, and I thought of Dave Franco, I was Dave Franco the whole time. Um, Jamie Foxx is a pool cleaner by daytime and a vampire hunter by nighttime. But, not really, because apparently nighttime is like super, it's a lot more chaotic and he doesn't follow the regulations and stuff, so he's kind of banned from fighting at night. But I think he's like an independent fighter and he goes to like this pawn shop and sells the vampire teeth he gets. Now, the, I have like, I have very small issues with this, but here's the, here's kind of the first one. It actually does a very poor job of establishing the universe. That's because it's a disposable film that doesn't have any intention of becoming a franchise or anything. So, I actually can't really tell you exactly what the setting is, but I can try. I think it's basically like Men in Black. I think the Union is um, like this underground secret agency that deals with the vampires and the rest of humanity just lives their normal lives completely blissfully unaware. Um, and I'm really making that in, in for, what's that word? that inference from the fact that um, Bud's family is unaware of the existence of vampires. He keeps it hidden from them. So they don't really tell you that, but I think because his family is unaware, I believe that the rest of the world would probably be unaware as well. Um, because, you know, they are... I mean, in this movie, the whole point of this movie is that the vampires have developed a sunscreen that allows them to well, come out in the sun. So if they didn't know about them before, they definitely were going to. Um, but yeah, honestly, that's like the first issue of the movie is the setting is really, really poorly, uh, described. Like, was he actually a pool cleaner or is that literally just a fake job? Because, like, the vampire queen lady actually calls him a pool cleaner, so does he literally have two jobs? I couldn't tell you. So, yeah, and, um, kind of off topic, this is, this is more so what's happening. Uh, it's not really a plot-driven story, which is fine, I don't care. Um, he's basically trying to get $10,000 saved up so that he can convince his ex-wife or girlfriend, I, again, they don't really tell you that, I don't know if it was his wife or girlfriend, um, try and convince her that he's, you know, a sustainable, responsible father who can look after his daughter and prevent them from going to Florida. So, he, uh, he's been kicked out of the union, the men in black, quite a bit of time, so he gets the, he enlists the help of Snoop Dogg, which normally I don't like it when musical artists become actors, just to make, like, actually, I don't mind cameos, but I do kind of mind, um, main lead roles. However, Snoop Dogg gets an exception, because I really liked him in Trailer Park Boys, the series, so I didn't mind him at all here. And he basically gets the help of Snoop Dogg to vouch for him and give him one last chance and that's so he, because the union offers better prices. So, yeah. And he gets paired up with this, with uh, Dave Franco, who, Dave Franco has like a few shticks he does. And the one he's doing this time is the one where he's like really awkward and um, inept and kind of naive. And it's really funny. I definitely loved it. So, it's like perfect. Like, Jamie Foxx is like that badass, warrior, fearless, really tough guy, macho. And then he's paired up with a buddy cop. It's like a buddy comedy. Um, with a completely inept, awkward, you know, even though I'm sure Dave Franco is much older than I am, he kind of looks like a child in every movie he's in, right? Um, I've been, I've been told I look like Dave Franco as well, I don't know if that's true, but I have been. So, yeah, he's like, 
he, he just plays that very awkward, inept, naive kid. And it's a great, it's a great duo. I, it really is. Jamie Foxx, he carries the scenes alone just by being silent. And Dave Franco fills in the blanks with pointless noise that makes you laugh. So, yeah. Um, let's hop with the issue. So first of all, like I said, the setting slash universe is very poorly described. I can compare this to something like Love and Monsters, which is another Netflix film. Love and Monsters is another example of a, uh, like a, 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 an alternate universe, and it's only one movie, and it does a much better job of describing what's happening. So right here, it's not described to you at all. You basically just jump right into his life, and you just kind of have to fill in the blanks. Um, number two, I would say, oh yeah, and this is the only, the only other problem I would say, the uh, real estate uber vampire lady, she didn't work as an antagonist whatsoever. She's not developed. She gets barely any screen time. She wears a ridiculous looking costume in this movie. Like She's literally a real estate agent, which has nothing to do with anything. That's just like a little character quirk. Um, and the only other defining characteristic about her is that she speaks Spanish. Uh, that, that's about it. She's a real estate agent and she speaks Spanish. That's her character. So she's like the driving baddie. It just doesn't really work. And um, I would say her fight, since she's an uber vampire, she has superior powers to the rest of the vampires. And um, while the rest of the action is really good and looks like John Wick stuff, like there's that one shameless actor in there that, look, that does a great job as well. Um, he's a horrible accent, by the way, but he, he, he's a good stunt actor, I think. I'm pretty sure he was doing his own work there. So, sorry, I left a train of thought here. Um, the final fight, the reason, it's not like awful or anything, it's not like... It's not like Suicide Squad bad, like if you can think about those kind of CGI final fights, it's not that bad, but it's just, it's, it's worse than all of the action up to this point, because of the rest of the action there was quite a bit of practical effects and blood and stuff and gore, and she's just kind of moving around like the Flash, so yeah, anyways, um, 8 out of 10 for Day Shift, I thought it was very fun, very entertaining. It's, um, it is repetitive, but I didn't mind that because it was good repetition. It's like, yes, I want more of this. Yes, please give me more. So a lot of content here. They don't really spare, um, they, like, they don't cheap out on you money-wise. There's plenty of action and fighting. And Dave Franco honestly kills it. It's, uh, it's, it's not like he's, um, it's not like he's ascended to some acting wizard or anything it's just he was the right he was the right person to cast for this kind of role and it worked really well and it kind of elevated the movie from what it was like on surface value it's a disposable vampire movie with no substance but because of the cast choices it really works really well so and the john wick action is very good too so yeah eight out of ten highly recommend